What's up? What's up? It's Pika here in Singapore, and it is Wednesday night, January 3rd, and I feel pretty good right now. Um, this morning went off without a hitch, dropped her off with no problems. The only difficulty being that, you know, today I went to work, so um, I had to leave work at a particular time to come and pick her up and then go back to work. So we were timing it today because school, uh, the the tuition center hasn't really f- kicked in with its classes yet, so we're just trying to time and see how everything works. Um, so I need to, you know, trial and error, figure out what time to leave, what time, um, how long it would take, which route to take, which is the fastest, whatever, and then, um, you know, pick her up, come right back, whatever, and then manage the rest of my day. So today I left at 1.00. But I didn't get there until 2, um, which school lets out at one forty-five. so I was a little bit late. I had to go straight to the office and pick her up from there. And then we turned right back around, walked straight to the bus stop, and got back on the bus, switched two trains, and then went back to work. So um, it, round trip took about two hours, which is fine. I've been allowed that. I just need to get back a little bit earlier, I think, because I don't want to be late picking her up again. I feel like this is something I should do because as a parent, I want to make sure that she's with me as much as possible and I want her to know that I love her, that I'm there for her, that I'll, you know, that I put her first. So my decision not to put her in child care, my decision not to get a helper to do all this work for me and to take the effort and, you know, basically run around a little bit in the middle of my day. It's basically what I'm doing is I'm taking my lunch break to go pick her up and bring her back. Um, I think it's my responsibility and my right to do this as I see fit. Now, like I mentioned, like very briefly yesterday, I did get in, into like a, a squabble almost maybe just, I mean, maybe, um, it wasn't an argument because the other party kind of just like, you know, backed out of the conversation completely, but I kind of feel like I got into a situation where I maybe ruffled some feathers The decision to live my life like this, I mean, honestly, it's not the Singaporean way. Everybody has a maid. Everybody puts them in daycare. Everybody sticks them in every tuition lesson, after school program, extra music lessons, swimming lessons, all these lessons over and over and over and over and over again. Um, And basically what ends up happening, because I watch this, right? I work for a tuition company. I watch this. What ends up happening is the child leads one life. One parent leads one life. The other parent leads another life. And Basically, the only reason you come home is because you all happen to sleep in the same place. I'm not down with that. That's not cool. I don't like that. That's not me. I can't do it. I have been dragged all over the world. I have lived in five different countries. I went to 10 different schools all before I hit eighth grade. Lived, uh, learned seven different languages. It had to be the new girl in school over and over and over again. And throughout that whole process, I was basically raised by one parent. Now, I'm not saying that anyone was wrong for having done that. I'm not saying that, you know, this person should have done better and that person thought more. I'm not saying that at all. I know what it felt like in my childhood. Now, lucky for me, it just so happened that everywhere we went, we were able to depend on family around to kind of help us out to kind of make sure that we had, you know, a place to stay until we got our feet on the ground. We were able to, you know, put down roots or whatever, which honestly, we still don't have roots. Um, But the fact is, there were people around to help. Now, in this situation, there was no one around to help because they're all of the impression that each of you should take care of your own problems and you should not rely on family to take care of your problems for you because then we're enabling you and you don't learn how to take care of yourself. Bullshit. (laughs) If you're not in the position to help me, fine, then say that. If you don't want to help me, fine, then say that. But don't come at me after I've looked at the situation inside and out and made the best play for me and then ask me a bunch of questions about why I'm doing this. Why shouldn't I do this? Why can't I? Like, honestly, the question that came out to me was, why are you trying to bypass the system? What system? You call this a system to raise children? Anyway, to
Today I want to talk to you about my head and my heart. Yes, logically it doesn't make sense. Logically, it looks like I'm putting my work at risk. But if my employer understands the situation and is willing to allow for this, because then I actually, I actually concentrate better because I have my child with me. I actually can stay later because I don't have to rush off early in case you know something goes wrong at the office. I don't. I I see it as a win-win, you know. Logically, yes, it looks like I'm doing too much. Logically, it looks like, you know, the smartest thing to do would be to concentrate on work only and then put her in daycare because, I mean, she'll be there. It'll be okay. I have her for the rest of my life, right? But my heart's not okay with that. As much as we try to rationalize our decisions, I don't know if you've noticed, but your heart wins out in the end. Because something happens when you when you start doing things for other people or doing things that are against your better nature, doing things that don't feel good but you do because you have to, or so you say. That aggravated feeling you feel turns into something physical. Have you ever noticed this? I'm speaking generally. I'll switch the situation. Okay, I'll give you the situation. Um, I used to work for someone that I. That, okay. Let's start at the beginning. Whenever I start to work for someone, I think, "Wow, this company is amazing! I can't believe I got this job. These people are great. The the you know the whole process of doing things is great. Their mission in life is great. I can't wait. I'm excited. I, I you know I'm happy to do all this work." And at that point, I start to overexert myself. I bend over backwards to get things done. I work to make myself irreplaceable. Why? Because I want to leave that place better than when I found it. I believe in you, I want to help you, I want to push you forward, I want to do everything I can, basically. Now, fast forward a couple months, or years, or whatever the case may be, and little by little, your perfect facade kind, kind of tends to fall away, because either one, the employer gets tired of putting up the front, or two, you suddenly see the breaks in communication, or the, the flaws in the process or whatever it is. Like certain things happen and you realize, okay, they're not perfect in this area. They're not perfect in that area. And that's not to say that, you know, quit now because they're not perfect. I'm saying you do your best. This the next thing that happens, right? You see your problems, you try and fix it. Or you try and think about the solution. You try and brainstorm and give them ideas. You try and fix it yourself, whatever the case may be. And at some point you get pushback. Like, no, you can't do that. Or no, I don't like that idea. Um, I worked for a wine company and as wonderful as the idea was, and I've been an event planner for a long time, I was happy to do the events. Okay. It was pretty easy. I mean, if it's a dinner party, basically what do you have to do? You have to figure out what the menu is. You have to figure out what the wine pairings are because we are a wine company. Um, see if you can get, you know, one of the representatives from the, the vineyard itself to come down and talk about it. So then that's a draw, right? For anyone who wants to buy the wine to actually be able to speak to the, um, the, the winemaker themselves that's pretty it's pretty amazing so location menu someone from the vineyard um and then you start booking guests to come to the dinner it's all easy when you say it out like that but when the owner is very very specific and doesn't like this and doesn't like that and doesn't start nitpicking until you start making plans because they're unable to tell you exactly what they want from the beginning then suddenly you have a problem. Then it's like your ego is a little bruised. You feel like you can't do enough. You feel like, you know, you're being undermined at every, every turn. It's, it, it becomes difficult. Um, I'll give you another example. I worked for a hotel. Love the hotel, love the people, love the guests and everything, but they have a habit of siding with the guests before siding with the employee. Now, I don't know if you know, but as an employer and a potential employer, if you take care of your employees and they feel like you got their back, they'll take care of the guests. If you take care of your employees, they will take care of the guests or the customer. If you take care of the customer every time, and yeah, there's that old adage, the customer's always right. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The customer's human. As are your employees. And if you know anything about people... The best way to get what you need to get done is to stroke ego. Either way, 
I did my best. I was happy to help the, help the guests. I was happy to, you know, abide by the rules. But what I soon found was some people had rules and some people didn't. Some people, because they were so well connected at the top, didn't need rules. And the minute they started complaining about stuff, well, that held weight for some reason. I'm the kind of girl that, you know, if I'm on shift and you tell me I can't leave the lobby unless the next person who's supposed to take over has come down, I'm not going to leave the lobby. If you tell me that, you know, I can't go to lunch until the person who's supposed to take over comes down, I'm not going to go to lunch until that happens. Now, if I get a guest in between, well, guess what? I'm not going to leave the guest and go to lunch. I'm going to take care of the guests and finish up with them and then go do what I got to do. It just so happens that sometimes when I did what I thought was right, I would end up missing the lunch period because they have to shut down and start cooking for dinner, right? And apparently that would cause trouble for the rest of my colleagues. Why? I didn't eat. What are you hurting for? But it became one of those things where I I kept feeling like I was being underutilized, unappreciated, picked on because <laughs> because I was doing what I thought was right. Eventually, however much you try to rationalize it, however much you try and say, no, it's okay, you just leave. No, that's that's not who I am. I'm not going to leave the job half done. I can't do it. It's not who I am. Eventually, my heart wins out. And when I keep ignoring my heart, what ended up happening was I would wake up in the morning and instead of feeling like, okay, I had a pretty good night's sleep. Let's, let's see what I have to do at work today. I would wake up with a headache. I would be fine until like 10 minutes before I had to leave the house and suddenly my stomach would kick in and I feel like I needed to, you know, go to the bathroom or throw up or something like I would feel sick suddenly at the thought of going to work. It became physical. Have you have you had situations like that? Have you had situations where you think of a person and suddenly you have a gut reaction and I mean like you feel sick or you start making up excuses not to go see them or whatever it is. I remember when my dad would call us like if we were in trouble and suddenly we get weak in the knees. We suddenly feel like, you know, we were dizzy or needed to throw up. Like we would get, we'd be scared because, <laughs> you know, if he calls you something really wrong. I wish we could teach our children that there really is no point in trying to justify why you're doing what you're doing unless it's based on how you feel. It really is about how you feel. Everything, everything in life is about how you feel. If you get a job because it happens to be the first offer you got, and you feel like it's a wrong fit, then guess what? It's a wrong fit. And it doesn't matter how hard you try and make it fit. You won't feel good about it. It's like if you, you know, you go into business with somebody and you find out that that person isn't all the way 100%, you know, on the level. They're hiding stuff. And little by little you start seeing, you know, parts of their personality that you don't really appreciate. And obviously the first thing you should do is mention it, say something, because maybe they don't see it. Maybe they don't realize that this affects you a certain way. If you don't say something, you don't give them the opportunity to change it. If you say something and they don't change it, well, then that's on them and that speaks volumes about them, right? But the bottom line is you feel and that's all that matters. You can't change how you feel <laughs> because it doesn't stay changed for long unless you honestly have, you know, adjusted. You've changed. If I'm mad about something and I grip my teeth and I smile at you and pretend nothing's wrong, that doesn't mean I'm no longer angry. I'm faking it. I'm putting it aside for a little while. I'm not letting it bubble to the surface. I'm not allowing myself to feel it. Why? Because maybe I'm trying to spare your feelings. Maybe I'm not trying to hurt you. Maybe I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt. But guess what? The second time you do that, that anger will bubble up faster. Until there comes a time where I blow up, let loose, acid tongue and all, 
and suddenly I hurt your feelings. There is, there is a difference between your mind and your heart. But I'm telling you now, forget the head, it will justify anything you want. Go with your heart. Go with your heart. Your heart knows what's wrong and right. Your heart knows what's best for you. It's like, it's, it's, it's connected to your intuition. Your heart understands. Your heart usually works from a place of love. Your mind is ego. It will justify everything, honey. That doesn't make it right. You ever find how kids, um, kids will do something sneaky because they want something, and then when they get caught, they'll lie about it. And when they lie, they come up with these fantastic stories about why they had to do whatever they had to do. Rather than they just tell you, well, I wanted it, so I did it. <laughs> That's what your mind does. It justifies. It makes up stories. It fills in the gaps where there are, where there are gaps. It completes the story. Whereas the heart... Okay, sometimes there's no logic behind the heart. But that's the point, right? You love, you want, you feel, you hate, you don't like, you are uncomfortable. It doesn't fit. You know because you feel. So why not cut the crap and follow your heart? It's not always going to be easy. It won't be the popular decision. The great things come with time. And those of us who are different, who don't fit the norm, have always faced violent opposition from mediocre minds. It's okay to be different. It's okay that you want to do things your own way. There are a million ways to do things. <laughs> There's not one way to cook stuff. There's not one way to cut paper with a pair of scissors. There's no one way to color or paint. There are millions of ways to do that. Do it the way you, you, feel, you see fit. Do it the way that makes you happy. The soul's only purpose is to be happy. And it will gravitate to whatever it is that helps you feel happy. I feel happiest when I feel like I'm really being a parent. Sure, I could get a maid. Sure, I could stick her in daycare and tuition and whatever other classes I want. But then I better not dare say I'm her mother. That's how I feel. It wasn't until this conversation yesterday that it hit me and I realized that I'm not meant to do things the way Singaporeans do. <laughs> the, the comment was, you're not in the U.S. anymore. This is the way things are done in Singapore. Great, okay, but then how come it works in the U.S. and it doesn't work here? Yes, I have 24 hours in a day. Someone was kind enough to remind me, you know what? I remember you posted something about you worked until 5 o'clock in the morning on your own business to make sure that, you know, you were where you needed to be. You slept for a little bit, you woke up, and you made waffles. No, I didn't have to do that shit. I did it because I love her. I want her to know I'm thinking of her. I want her to feel like she had some kind of semblance of a childhood. So her cousins aren't always around. So the family doesn't get together and ask about us or, you know, come to visit or none of that stuff. Fine, whatever. I'm her mom. I'm with her every day. I have no excuse. And it doesn't take 10 hours to make waffles. Just a couple of ingredients that we pretty much always have in the house. And anytime we have a chance to sleep in, that's what I do. Usually it's French toast. Or pancakes. It's not hard, you guys. It's not rocket science. And it's not too much effort. Lately I've been eating out a lot. Mostly because, yeah, we're running late. I'm... 
I'm kind of tired. I don't have the time to sit down and cook. Why? Because it's poor planning on my part. It's my fault. It's poor planning because honestly, I could cook properly when I have the chance and take care of business like I should. I've done it before, but lately, yes, I'm falling short. But it is possible. I mean, look at me. I've been without a maid since April of last year. And I'm not suffering that badly. And she's in pretty good health. I'm in pretty good health. Except for the occasional upset stomach because you ate, you know, too much outside food. We're fine. So don't ever let anyone talk you out of what you think is right. If it feels right to you and it makes you happy, do it. Don't wait for permission. Don't wait for the perfect opportunity. There is no such thing. Don't wait to time it. The time will never be right. Just go do it. But follow your heart, please. Your mind is fickle. It will justify whatever you want to justify. Do what you think is right. Do what you feel is right. Go with your gut. And if you're actually listening to your body, it won't lead you wrong. Well, that's my ramble, rambling for today. Um, I hope the rant was helpful. <laughs> I, um, I didn't choose this topic to complain about anything. It's just the fact that I feel like I learned something about myself through this situation. And I feel like I needed to share it because there are probably more of you than you'd like to admit that are going through something like this as well. You want to do something a certain way. Somebody somewhere doesn't want you to do it that way. But you need to think about the source and why they're telling you that. And bottom line, if it doesn't feel good to you, you're not going to be happy doing whatever they offer you anyway. Might as well do it the way you feel. What do you think? Be brave this year, y'all. Be righteous. Be brave. Do you. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate you listening. Um, for those of you who are coming in for the replay, I really, really appreciate that you take the time to come, you know, listen to me. And if you feel like I gave you some value, if you feel like you like what I'm talking about, you understand what I'm talking about, you feel like I'm able to shed some light on some issues that you've been having, please, please, please drop me a line. Let me know. Um, if you feel like I'm full of shit, let me know. If you feel like you'd like to leave a comment or you'd like to contact me, please do. I'm open to um, constructive criticism, comments, concerns, whatever it is. I'm open for a great conversation. So please hit me up if you're interested. Otherwise, uh, go ahead and hit the notification bell so you know whenever I post. And um, I will catch you again tomorrow. Y'all take care.